last concept notes for our physical science year together. And just like acids and bases, y'all, this is just for honors. And this is going to be the briefest summary of nuclear chemistry of all time, just like acids and bases. Do not expect this to do this justice by any means. But I just want to go a little bit more extended in honors and give you a little bit more background information before you enter into chemistry. So here is our brief, brief summary of nuclear chemistry. Concept 5 notes just for honors. So think back to our atomic structure unit and talking about the nucleus. Remember that's the dense center of an atom and it's composed of positive protons and neutral neutrons. And remember they're held together by an extremely strong, strong force in there. The whole atom is very attracted because of the negative electrons in the electron cloud and the positive protons in the center of the nucleus. But what makes it even stronger and the mo most energy is right in this nucleus. Remember, op or excuse me, like charges repel. So these positive protons don't want to be near each other and yet they're held together. So they really want to be away from each other, which means that there's an insane amount of energy in the nucleus. And that's what makes nuclear chemistry a science. So what is nuclear chemistry? It is the study of changes to the nucleus of an atom. And this science kind of came to be, this study came to be in 1896 by um, this man, who I'm not even going to attempt to say his name because I just know I will butcher it. Um, I'm going to call him Henry, but I'm sure it's Henri or something fancier. But he discovered uranium emitted something called radiation. Most of you have probably heard of this woman in this picture. She is Marie Curie, and she is most famous for her discoveries involving radioactivity, which ironically, she actually died from overexposure exposure to the radioactivity that she was studying because at the time they didn't realize how serious it was. So... Radiation, radioactivity, what are these words? Let's break it down. Radioactivity is the emission of something called radiation. Radiation is particles that are released due to the disintegration of an atom's nucleus. So when an atom's nucleus disintegrates, it gives off particles, and those particles are called radiation. Radiation. When that happens, there is radioactivity. Radioactive decay or nuclear decay is the process by which an unstable nucleus can no longer hold itself together. So it starts losing energy and matter by giving off this radiation. So these words are often kind of used interchangeably, and they're not completely incorrect to be done that way. But I just wanted to clarify those a little bit. Remember, a nucleus with a different number of neutrons than protons is considered to be unstable. And some are more unstable than others. So here's a picture of a nucleus, and we're giving off a particle and giving off energy. That's what we mean by radiation, or this process of radioactive or nuclear decay. And in my class, there's a 10-minute video I really want you to watch with me about radioactivity. It's much deeper than these notes, but um, so if you're already overwhelmed, maybe don't watch it. But I think it just does a really good job explaining this a lot further than I am. So something, I, two more things I really want to mention to you. Um, first is the three types of radiation that can be given off. There's alpha, beta, and gamma. So alpha radiation is the release of something called an alpha particle from the nucleus. And an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. So an example is uranium-238 breaks down, decays, and it gives off um, helium and, um, the, the, and this element here. So this is kind of an example of this alpha radiation. And you can see we're looking at the numbers here that two are being given off. Beta radiation is when a neutron actually mutates into a proton and an electron um, the, and then the, excuse me, when a neutron mutates into a proton and an electron, and the electron gets released from the nucleus. So, we'd have carbon-14, and it would give off your one electron, and then it would actually end up making nitrogen. Because again, a neutra neutron becomes a proton. So now our proton number is different, so it's no longer carbon. It's now going to be nitrogen. And then last is gamma radiation. This is the release of electromagnetic energy from the nucleus. Remember, that's created by um, energy given off between electric um, and magnetic waves. 
in moving between those fields. This will happen during alpha or beta radiation, so it's kind of a secondary process. All right, there are two types of nuclear reactions. These are a lot simpler to understand than um, the three types of radiation, I promise. First is nuclear fission. Fission means to split. So this is the splitting of a really large atom into two or more smaller ones. And it happens when a neutron gets fired into a nucleus and it makes it an unstable um, place and it causes it then to split. This doesn't naturally occur. This is what we do in power plants to make nuclear energy. And the negative, even though it makes insane amount of energy, which is awesome, um, it also releases radioactive waste, which can cause cancer and some other really severe side effects. The other type of nuclear reaction is nuclear fusion, and fuse, fuse means to combine. So it is the fusing or combining of two or more lighter atoms into a larger one. And this does occur naturally, y'all. This is what happens in stars. This is what the sun does. It requires insane amounts of energy, but it releases no radioactive waste. So it's, it's totally safe. So if we can learn how to harness this um, reaction and do it in power plants, we would not make any more radioactive waste, which would be amazing. And here's an example of what we're talking about with two hydrogens fusing to make a helium and an insane amount of energy. All right, last, a couple practical uses for nuclear chemistry. First is in medicine. Tracers are radioactive isotopes that are placed in someone to track how molecule travels through their body so that scientists can study it. It's almost like a red flag that they put on a molecule, and we can use it to help target cancer cells. Um, the problem is when we use these tracers, there's radioactive waste, and so we have to store it until it no longer is radioactive. Um, an example is using iodine-131 to detect thyroid problems, or fluorine-18 is used in PET scans to detect brain problems. And this is a picture of um, a machine that can be used for an x-ray, a CT scan, or a PET scan, because those you often use radiation to get images of the body. Another use for nuclear chemistry is nuclear weapons. These are devices that use these nuclear reactions, but for destructive purposes. Um, one of the most popular exam examples is the atomic bomb, um, like the ones dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki um, by the United States in World War II. It utilized, these weapons utilize chain reactions, so it's an ongoing series of reactions um, that kind of makes one thing happen after another after another, and it causes just an exponential result. This results in tremendous amounts of destruction, contamination of the environment, they call it a nuclear winter, and then, of course, long-term effects from radioactive waste like mutations and cancer, which is pretty serious. And last use for nuclear chemistry is in nuclear reactors. These are power plants, like we mentioned before, that use nuclear reactions to create energy. Benefits is they make a ton of energy from very little materials, and we don't emit any greenhouse gases, so we aren't potentially contributing to global warming. Drawbacks are with these nuclear power plants are water system pollution, of course radioactive waste, exposure to all the workers who are working in these power plants that's having you know lifelong effects on them, and then poorly maintained facilities lead to absolutely traumatizing accidents like Chernobyl. And we are going to watch a video about Chernobyl now in class. And that is your brief summary on nuclear chemistry.